I will be sharing my strategies and learning experiences from this competition. But firstly, let me introduce myself. So I'm Angela Pialago, Team ID SG5004. And in 2018, I participated in the National Robotics Competition or NRC. In 2019, I participated in NRC Open and RoboCup Co-Space Rescue. This year, I participated in the International Co-Space Online or iCool Challenge in the RoboCup Asia Pacific Co-Space Rescue First Steps U19 category. Lastly, I also participated in the Virtual RCAP 2020 in the same category where I was part of Team Wangela that achieved fourth place. Before sharing my strategies, here is a summary of the preliminary challenge. So the category I'm taking part in is the Co-Space Rescue First Steps U19 category. And the challenge task involves earning as many points as possible in five minutes by collecting and depositing red, cyan, and black objects efficiently. The robot must also avoid obstacles that hinder movement and traps that cause a loss of points. The problem investigated is how to quickly, de how, how to quickly collect and deposit objects while avoiding traps and obstacles, so as to maximize points earned. I utilized the features and variables available on the CoSpace simulator and coded functions that use them, so as to create a strategy to fulfill the challenge task. I managed to achieve a consistent score of about 2,300, even achieving a score as high as 2,500. I learned that I should constantly try new routes to see where the best places to go to on the map are to collect the most number of objects. I should also continue to edit my code and strategies until my score is consistent. Now I will analyze the strategies I used. To accomplish the challenge task, I the robot had to complete many tasks, such as moving to certain squares, avoiding obstacles and traps, and collecting and depositing objects. By efficiently fulfilling these mini tasks, the overall mission will be solved. Now I will be talking about AI algorithms and resources used. I used Repolit to test, edit code, and back it up. I also used Sublime to edit code, and lastly, Command Prompt to compile files. Repolit is simple to use and convenient to, uh, for keeping a backup of my code should I need to revert to an old version. Sublime helped in preparing files to be compiled on, uh, to run on the simulator. My code can be broken up into five parts, the movement function, color sorting function, square targeting rotation, wall rotation and avoidance, and trap avoidance. I will further explain these in the next few slides. So first is the movement function. It has three variables, one being speed that ranges from minus one to one, which is the robot moving in the maximum speed in reverse and forward respectively. Another one is rotation that also ranges from minus one to one, which is the maximum rotation in the anti-clockwise and clockwise direction respectively. Lastly, max speed, which is the maximum speed that the robot can run at. I have this variable uh, set at 90 for the preliminary map, as I realized that due to the thicker warning zone, around the traps, the robot does not fall into them. Hence, I let it run at 90 with or without objects. Essentially, this function calculates the appropriate speed and rotation for the robot to make necessary movements. Next is the color, color sorting function. Uh, different actions need to be taken upon detecting each color, such as depositing at the orange deposit zone. I analyze the R, G, and V values of each color to come up with the best function to separate the different colors or cases. This was done using if-else statements and thresholds, which allowed for a right, wide range of values to be allocated to each case so that the robot can effectively separate the cases. The function checks the current color sensor values, determines what color is being detected, and returns an integer for each specific case. Using these integers, I coded the robot's actions. Now, now I will talk about square targeting rotation, or SDR, which is the main thing that drives my strategies. So the map is divided into a 3x3 three three grid, as seen on the right, with each square having its own unique coordinates. Thus, I know the location of the robot and can target a specific square on the map. Therefore, I can determine the horizontal and vertical distance to be traveled. I then use the a 2 function uh, to calculate the angle and uh, the robot needs to turn to to face the target square. Lastly, I calculate the error or how drastic the robot's turn is. Using SDR, the robot can target specific squares where a certain color of object spawns. 
by going a specific route of squares, the robot can collect two objects of each color in each square, creating an RRCCDD set that earns a bonus of 180 points. The robot can then target a square with a deposit zone in it to quickly deposit and move on to collecting more objects. Here I will talk about wall rotation and avoidance. I used trigonometry to convert the values of the left and right ultrasonic sensors from being tilted 45 degrees to facing exactly zero. Based on how far the robot is from an obstacle, I can calculate error, which is how urgently the robot needs to turn. The error from wall rotation and STR are used together to travel to squares and avoid obstacles. So if there is an obstacle in the robot's path while traveling to another square, wall rotation will be used to avoid it, uh, before switching back to STR to continu continue traveling to the square. And lastly, trap avoidance. When the robot is carrying objects and when either color sensor senses the warning, the robot turns away. Uh, one wheel moves back at a faster speed so that the robot rotates while backing up so that the robot does not fall into the trap again. When the robot is empty, it simply runs over the trap to not waste time. So these few flowcharts show how the strategies were implemented. Here's the implementation of the uh, color so sorting function. I broke up the different cases according to different ranges of R values first. If the R value is more than or equal to 244, I know that the robot is sensing a red object and so on. If there is more than one case in a range of R values, I use either the G or B values to further separate the cases. So this flowchart shows exactly how I separated the eight different colors on the preliminary map. And here's the implementation of SDR. When there's more than 20 seconds remaining and when the robot is full, the robot will go to the nearest deposit zone. When it can still collect objects, the robot will move into the square that has the color of object needed to form an RICCDD set. When there's less than 20 seconds remaining, the robot goes to the nearest deposit zone to deposit whatever objects it is carrying. Now I will talk about debugging. The robot performed as I coded it too, thankfully, but I experimented with a few routes to see which ones allow the robot to collect objects and reach the deposit zone the quickest. During any run, I constantly referred to the Cospace terminal to ensure that the values being printed were correct and that the robot was doing what it was coded to do. I will now share my conclusion from the preliminary round. Uh, I'm quite satisfied with my scores, but I am confident that if I were to solve the challenge again, I could improve. I could try a different, a, a different route that may allow the robot to collect and deposit objects faster, and I could also get the robot to go to other squares apart from those where a certain color of objects spawns so as to not completely exhaust all the objects in the route. Also, upon entering the squares with a deposit zone, perhaps I can code the robot to turn at a certain angle so that the robot goes straight into the deposit zone without bouncing around within the square. Lastly, I will share my learning experience and final thoughts. So I've learned that there are many different strategies that can be carried out to achieve the challenge mission, and I just need to figure out which ones allow the robot to earn point, points efficiently. I've also learned strategizing techniques and the importance of backing code up, and have gained experience editing and debugging my code. I'd like to encourage other participants to not be afraid of experimenting with uh, different features on the simulator to code different strategies to solve the challenge task. That is all for my presentation. Thank you, and I hope that you learned more from my sharing.